Hello, welcome to my video. Today I will be explaining how to run a Databricks workflow using the service principle. Why do we need to do this? So using service principles avoids the problem of a job failure when the creator of the job leaves the organization. You see this in your development, development environment or production environment where people create jobs and they decide to move to a different department or leave the organization, the job start failing. In this video, we'll work on creating a way for you to use your service principle to accomplish this. These are the steps. First, we create the service principle in Azure. I'm using Azure Cloud. Then we grant access to the service principle to the Azure Database workspace by giving it a contributor role. Next, we grant access to this service principle in the Databricks account console, user management. Then after that, we give the, your admin profile, the user, the service principle user access role. This is very important because that's the only way you can be able to change the runner's uh, persona in the workflow job with this role. And then we do the same thing in the at the workspace level. So one is at the account level, the next one is at the workspace level. At the workspace level, this will be inherited so you just have to ensure that then finally you have to ensure that the notebook that you are trying to run from the workflow that the service principle has access to it so i also add the can run permission to the notebook so let's uh, start the demo So I'll go to my my Azure Pro uh, uh, Azure portal. First thing I'll do is to create my service principle. I'll go to Microsoft Entra ID. I'll go to the app registration. I'll click new registration, and I'll say service principle. Test. And I'll say register. It's done registering. So I will leave this page open so I can see the application ID. Then I'll move to another page. I'll go to my workspace. So I already created a demo workspace. Like I said in the steps, first thing is to grant access to that uh, service principle on in the workspace. So I go to the access control. When I go here, I will add role assignment. When I add role assignment, I go to privilege, click the contributor role, click next, and I'll look for the service principle. I'll call it, what did I call it? Service principle test. I'll select it, I'll say next and review and assign. So that's added. Now the next thing is what? 
I will grant access to that survey principle in the database account console. So now I will go into my workspace. I'll launch workspace. Once I launch the workspace, I will click on this part to go to the manage uh, account to see my, my, my workspace or the account console and I go to user management I'll click service principle I have a bunch of service principles but I don't have that one so I'll click add now I wish this is something that database can improve I wish there was more handshake from Azure into this account management so that it, it could have added it automatically to the, the account console. But that's a, another discussion. So for now, I will need to add it manually. Microsoft Entra Application ID. So I will look for that. That's why I left this page open. Our application Client ID, I'll copy that number or the, the characters. And I'll paste it here. Service principle name. I'll copy the name. And I'll paste it here. And I'll say that. Once that is added, you can see service principle test. I'll go to the rows. I don't need to make it account admin. I'll just go to permissions. And this way this is very important. Read the read the instruction. It says you need to add the service principle user uh, 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 role to your account admin. This is my account admin profile. So I have to make sure I add the service principle user because just having the manager is not good enough if I want to be able to use it, use this service principle. So I have to grant access. I'll click the Millennial Data Printer. That's my admin account. He already has the manager, but I'll add another and say user. One second. So I click here and add user. Yeah. Then you see I have both. So once I have that, that is good. So I'm, I'm done with this step. So we're now done all, all the way to this step. Now we have to do this step. So again, this is another room for improvement for Databricks because as you see, when I go to navigate to the workspace, I can now click my profile here. I'll go to settings. This is the workspace identity and access. When I click this, I will go to service principles. And here, I can now add this service principle. Again, this is another room for improvement. Could it have been added automatically for me? That, that's, 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 I think it could, but let's add it. So we have to type service principle. Test. So again, if you are not seeing this service principle test while you are typing it, you, you didn't do all the steps. 
So you have to make sure you do the steps for it to even show here. So I add it. So now I have it added. Now I have to also click it. And because I'm trying to use it to run the job clusters, I will say allow cluster creation. Update this permissions. And you see, I just needed to ensure that it inherited this uh, uh, um, this rows from the account profile so that looks good i don't have to add it here again so i'll leave it like that so now we have done all the way to this step so now we are ready to create a a, a workflow job and test this out So I'll go to my workflow. I'll create a job. I'll call it demo job test. It's going to run a simple notebook. And the notebook part, I already created a notebook that I'll show you a test notebook. I'll click confirm. <clears throat> so this notebook, I'll make the job cluster single node, something very simple. I don't need photon. You know, it's the cheapest that I can find. I'll say OK. Now here's the part that I need to change it. By default, you see that the, it takes on the ownership of the creator. But by default, I want to change it to um, I want to change it to to run as the service principle test. So service census test, you see it, it has a warning, but I'll say, okay, because I know that I've given it the right permissions, I click it save. So it works, right? Again, if you get an error at this step, that means you didn't do this. You didn't add the service principle user to your admin uh, profile. So you have to make sure you do that. <clears throat> and then once I have that, the finally, I have this step that in case you haven't done this, sometimes your notebook might not have access, your successor might not have access to run that notebook. So I have to go to workspace. You have to go to that notebook um, using this test notebook. You click the three the, the three dots here, click the share permissions, and make sure that you have added all workspace users can run this notebook. If you don't have it, it will not be able to access this notebook. So that's why I do that, and which is the last step I have here. And I go ahead and Called the job. Which one did I do now? Uh, let's see this one. First principle test. I will go ahead since it's set up. Let's say demo test run. It's set up our run now and it's gonna take some time because it has to it's using a job cluster to to run this so just have to be patient <clears throat> uh, 
anyway. I don't think you have to be patient because I know it's, it's running. So once once it's already creating a job ID, that's a good sign. It's gonna work. And um, <clears throat> that's that's pretty much it for this video. Um, as you can see, Databricks administration is a bit uh, complicated. And all these things that we did, we can actually do it via the API as well. So that's that's another another video <clears throat> that, that 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 is yet to come. But uh, for now, this and is a quick and daily way to get this done. And uh, th th that's it. Thank you. Uh, please leave likes and comments. And uh, I hope to drop more videos soon. Thank you. Bye.